If you just had to let go of an employee or maybe they quit, you definitely don't want to leave their Google Workspace account open. In these steps, I will show you how to keep your business files and folders secure, all while still maintaining access to the user's email address and your Google Drive files. Okay, so when we close a Google Workspace, a user's account, there's a couple steps that you want to take care of and in this sequence, okay? So I just have a list here. First is you want to block any recovery or password recovery options. You want to change the user's password. Three, you want to force sign outs or reset the cookies so that if they're signed in somewhere else, it forces them to sign out next time they visit. Fourth, you want to forward the user's emails to yourself or another employee. And then five, finally you delete their account. And there's also optional if you do need any Google Drive files that they own personally, not, you know, not that were shared to them, but just that they own, then there's also a way to recover those files. And just as a side note, this is in particular about, you know, Yuri made the decision to delete their account. There's also other options of suspending their account temporarily or even archiving, but archiving requires a license in order to do that. But it's kind of like a suspension, just at a different level, but you can archive and then delete if you're not sure yet or just suspend. All right. So those are a couple of different options. Let me know if you need instructions on that, but this is about deleting the account fully. Okay. All right. So let's start with the first step is blocking recovery options. So we want to go to here to admin.google.com. And obviously you want to sign in with your primary administrator account. And in order to do all the options here, especially like the Google Drive files, you basically have to be a super admin or, you know, if you're, if you're the one running the business and you created this, then you, you are that admin. Okay. So you just go here to this sidebar menu, let it pop up. Then you go to security, authentication and account recovery. Okay. So then it shows us here, the settings for this organization. This is the setting right here, user account recovery and allow users and non super admins to recover their account. Right now it's on. We want to turn that off or make sure it's off. Okay, take a few minutes. That's fine. You as a super admin will still be able to recover your account. So don't worry about that. And your settings have been changed. Okay, so that's what we look for. It's done. Let's go to the next step. So we want to now reset the password, user password. So let's go here to directory users. Okay, so again, following the example, this is for Yasmin, we just click reset password and we can do automatically create a password. You can still save it or create your own password and just click reset. Okay. So we just want to copy this password just in case you'll, you'll need it for now for this whole process. So just copy it somewhere, email it to yourself as you can do that as well. So maybe just to be sure I'll send it to myself. Okay. And click send and done. Okay, so step three to reset the sign in cookies, which again will kind of force them to sign out of other applications once they go to again. So just click onto the user. And then let's scroll down to sign in cookies right here. So let's click edit. And as you see here, resets the user sign in cookies, which also signs them out of their account across all their devices and browsers. Yes, so let's reset that. Great. And down here, it tells you the status. It did reset the sign in cookies. So another thing we can do here, since we already changed the password, we don't you know if we, if we don't go through all the way with the deletion, we could change this to not require a new password. Okay. Since we changed it and we just wanted to set it to the last password that we changed to. Okay. So next we will forward the user's email, right? They won't have access to it. You currently, and nobody has access to it. So, if there's someone that you do need their email access to, this is what you will do. Otherwise, you can you can just skip this this whole step. So let's go to apps, Google Workspace, and look for Gmail. Okay, then here we scroll down to routing. Okay, then here you just want to make sure you're in the correct organizational unit if you have more than one. And scroll down to email forwarding using recipient address map. Okay, there's other ways to do this, but this is really the, the best and correct ways to do it here in Admin Center. So let's go ahead and click Configure. Okay, and here we can, we can write a description. Okay, we're forwarding her email to admin. So here under Address, we just want to create a new line item. So click Add. So this address is the user's email address. 
Okay, so this is from who, from from where we're going to forward the email. So any email received at Yasmin or Yasmin at bchretail.com, that's, let's just forward it to myself. Okay, and if you want to route more, maybe there's more email addresses that you need to route, you could click add here to add more or even bulk add. Uh, but we're just doing this one, so let's just go with that. Okay, messages to effect. All incoming messages means even messages sent internally. So if there's other employees trying to communicate still to her, those will be forwarded as well. But if you do only external mean outside of your organization. So we'll just do everything. We don't need to route to the original destination, right? So her email address doesn't need to get it. And a header, that can be helpful if you're doing some filtering. Otherwise, you really don't, you don't need that. So let's just click save. Okay, so again, at the bottom, we get a confirmation that the forwarding address map has been set up. And you also see this rule applied right here. This is the one we just made. You could make this one the rule for all former employees and just add them in here line by line, or you can make separate ones by clicking add another rule right there. So now finally, we want to go back and now delete the account completely. So directory users, more options, and click delete user. So again, this is by the way, where you can suspend a user if you need to. If you're not sure yet uh, that you want to delete them, you could, you could suspend them here temporarily. Okay, so then this page pops up, gives you kind of a summary. So as we see, her Gmail use wasn't much active and even drive usage, okay? So a lot of files though, they were all shared files, which is why she has a lot of files that look, looks like she owned but they're really somewhere else shared by an, another person's Google Drive. Anyway, so here it, it does give you a warning that once you delete the data is gone for 20 days or delete it after 20 days and you can't just you know, go and pick and choose the data between that time you need to decide right now whether or not you want to transfer any data. This is just there for 20 days in case you change your mind and you want to restore the entire user account. So this might be helpful for you and I'll leave the links in the description if you want to read more, more of the details about deleting and this tells you more about suspension that you could suspend them if you're just not sure yet if you want to delete them, but you also you know you don't want them to access their account, right? You still do the password reset like we did, and you can suspend their account. Okay, so now the user's Gmail will have the options to migrate their existing email. So any email that might have sitting in their account, this is different from forwarding, right? Forwarding means any new email coming in. So if you need to do that, you could go through the whole migration process. Uh, otherwise, just skip that. And it just reminds you here to set up forwarding, which we already did. I'll skip the classroom information. So here's the data from Google Drive and, and calendar and whatnot. So do we want to transfer? Sure. Okay, so now this is about their Google Drive and calendar if we want to transfer that data. And let's say, yes, we do. I'll transfer it to myself. Let's go ahead. We do want to include all the files. Calendar, really don't need that. You could go ahead and select that if you do. And Looker Studio, for sure, you don't need that. Okay. One thing to consider here is that if, if there's an employee who's replacing an employee position, you might as well forward their data to them, right? So that they have the correct files that they need. And it, obviously, if you don't need to transfer, just click don't transfer data. So now let's click delete user. Okay, so it lets us know that the process has started. And honestly, if they don't have much data, this should be pretty immediate, immediate transfer of, of those data files. So their account is essentially deleted and might take, you know, 24 hours, but we have technically 20 days to restore the account if we really made a mistake. So let's just click okay. Okay, and just to verify, so you can go back to admin, refresh this page, directory users, and you should see, so right, for now, it just says suspended. That's just because it's pending deletion, okay? So that's essentially done. You can, you can go to Google Drive, and you'll see there, once you go to Google Drive, to your folders, you'll see a folder, that is just named after the user's email address, okay? That's where their files will be. Uh, same, same thing with the calendar. If you chose to save the calendar, it'll appear in your calendars under their email address. Hit the like button and subscribe if you learned something new, if this was helpful to you. I'll have helpful videos on the screen, playlists, if you need any more help with Google Workspace. And honestly, what I do is actually transition people and migrate them from Google Workspace to Microsoft 365. So I'll have some videos on the screen and in the description for you on how to do that. And if you have any questions on this process or you need help, just post your questions, comments in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Take care.